Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be talking about some roommate romances. I think I have one rec video for other roommate romances, you can check that out down below if you're interested. But I love a good forced proximity. I am obsessed with them. So I love roommate romances because these two people obviously didn't expect to fall in love with each other. But the fact that they are roommates and have to be in forced proximity with each other just like ups up the ante, makes it angstier, makes it sometimes hotter. So let's get into these 10 romances. I actually have two Hannah Bottom Young books. <laughs> this is Next of Kin and Out on a Limb. Both of them are roommate romances. So I'll start with the first one, Next of Kin, because um, this was her debut book, her first book. This is the romance between Chloe and Warren. So Chloe is recently the guardian to her baby sister. She grew up without her mother. She was adopted. Her birth mother ends up giving birth to a baby that she's not able to take care of. And so Chloe adopts her and becomes her guardian at the ripe age, I think of like 23. And she actually gets paired up with this guy who is also getting custody of his sibling. He's gonna get custody of his younger brother. They pair up because the heroine's having a kind of a difficult time financially and the hero can't really find a place to live right now. So he decides to split a lot of the costs with her if he moves in with her with like his brother. So the four of them, including the baby, end up becoming roommates. The heroine has like the loft part of the apartment with her baby sister and the hero and his brother have the two rooms. Anyway, the two of them at first don't really get along. The hero is like, you stay on your side, I stay on my side and we'll just basically be living together but we don't have to be friends, we don't have to be anything. We're just here to make sure that our siblings have like a good stable home. And she's like, okay, cool, I guess. Um, she was kind of expecting a friendship out of it, but he's been very distant towards her. But then slowly Warren starts doing things for Chloe, like helping her put her sister to bed or making a bottle or helping to wash her sometimes. And those little gestures actually mean a lot to Chloe. Obviously the two of them end up falling in love with each other. I really love this one, it was a great debut. And then the other Hannah book is Out on a Limb, which is like my favorite ever my baby like I love this book so stinking much okay so this is her newest release this is the romance between Wynn and Bo if you hadn't heard me talk about this book you're in for a treat so um Bo and Wynn end up meeting at a Halloween party that's what how the book starts um they have a wonderful grand hot time together okay um but Wynn ends up figuring out that she is pregnant she wasn't expecting to get pregnant but she's pregnant and it's with Bo's baby Bo insists that she moves into his house with him so they can get to know each other more so that he can be involved in the pregnancy I think they're gonna be living there for the first like year or so of the baby's life he's like I want to be a part of the baby's life just move in with me we'll be roommates like we'll be amazing co-parents together. And they both agree like it's not gonna go further than being co-parents and friends because they don't want to jeopardize their relationship that they could have with the baby. Like if they break up or something or if something goes wrong with their relationship, like they don't want the baby to be in between them. But obviously they fall for each other. This one is so stinking good. It has fantastic disability representation. The roommate's part in here was fantastic. There's like one scene where the heroine's trying to like put up a boundary of like, I think we're just gonna be friends. Like, I don't wanna jeopardize anything. And the hero's like, okay, I hear you. But if you're gonna do that, maybe you can be a little quieter at night. You can put two and two together and she's like mortified. <laughs> He's been able to hear her. The walls are very thin, okay. <laughs> Next is more of an enemies to lovers. This is the co-op by Tara Duet. These two people were actually kind of like together, had like a summer fling, I think like later in high school, maybe like senior year around that time. Anyway, they had like a fling one summer, um, but it kind of ended really badly and they have been, been on the right foot ever since then. Their grandmothers were actually best friends though and they lived in this duplex together. And when both grandmothers die, they die fairly close to each other in time. Um, they end up gifting or giving their part of the duplex to their respective grandchildren. So the two of them now own part of this duplex and um, they also can't get their inheritance money unless they're married, I think. And so the two of them have to get married in order to fix up this duplex to sell it to like, because they don't want it. So the two of them though have nowhere else to live during this time. So they have to stay in the duplex together. So it's a marriage of convenience romance with like people who bicker and banter all the freaking time, who thinks the other person hates them when maybe 
Maybe they, they don't. A Chloe Lisa one that's really good is Only and Forever. This is the latest book in her Broken Brother series, the last book. So this is the romance between Vigo and Tallulah. Vigo is the last Bergman sibling to not have his romance yet. So we've been dying for his. And Tallulah is actually Vigo's sister's best friend's sister. So Vigo has a sister named Ziggy. Ziggy has a best friend and Tallulah is that best friend's sister, if that makes sense. Anyway, the two of them, Vigo and Tallulah knew of each other a little bit because they had a college course together in college like one college course and they didn't really get off on the right foot. Tallulah is very cold at first when she meets people. Um, she likes to put people at a distance, but they've thought about the other person on and off for a while, okay? But these two are going to help each other out. Vigo is opening up a romance bookstore and he's having a little bit of trouble opening it. He can't afford staff right now. And Tallulah is having a really hard time with her second novel. She's a thriller writer and she's really stumped on her draft. So Vigo said that he'll help her with this draft of hers if she will help him in the bookstore and she's going to move into the spare room that uh is in the apartment that's attached to the uh, bookstore that Vigo also lives in so there are roommates living in this apartment attached to this beautiful romantic bookstore <laughs> it's actually really sweet I love both these characters it has type 1 diabetes representation like I love I loved this one I do have two Emma Scott books to mention so first is the butterfly project um, where our heroine is a graphic novel artist writer and she really wants to get her graphic novel up and running in New York City. But she's having trouble, especially with like a place to live. She then bumps into the hero who works at a restaurant she goes to and he kind of confesses to her like, yeah, I'm kind of short a couple bucks this month on rent and we have to sell a few things. And she's like, oh, wait, 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 I need somewhere to live. How about I help you like make rent and in exchange, like, you let me stay in your apartment, like, live there, sleep there, work on my graphic novel there. Like, I feel like this is a win-win situation, so that that's what they do. But they live in this shoebox of a size apartment. Like, it is so tiny. And so, forced proximity to the max in here. Um, they also have to share a bed because at first the heroine gets an air mattress, but then the air mattress pops. And so what is she to do? He invites her to sleep in the bed with him. <laughs> so um, I really love this one. The tension here is, like immaculate and then another one with amazing tension is rushed by emma scott so our hero in here is a visually impaired he was this very famous um like journalist when it came to extreme sports he would go do extreme sports and write about it so the last thing that he did though i think he did some cliff jumping and he got injured while he was cliff jumping and he is now not able to see and he feels like his life is completely over and he has just been living as a shell of a human in his apartment in New York City. His parents end up hiring the heroine to kind of be his like live in babysitter, take care of him, make sure like he's eating, he doesn't die. Like they're just want her to be there to help take care of him. He is not happy at first. He's like, I don't need a babysitter. I don't need someone to take care of me. He just wants to sit in his room, sit in a chair and do nothing for the rest of his life. He's like, I don't need someone to take care of me that's what I'm gonna be doing, doesn't matter. The heroine is a student at Juilliard. She is, I believe, a violinist. She is like needing some more money to help with her tuition. So she like very much like agrees like really fast to this proposition that his parents have. But she didn't realize like how hard it would be. This dude is fighting for every tooth and nail, isn't the nicest, is kind of mean. Um, but she also loves the solitude that the apartment will give her because she used to live in this apartment with like five other people she could barely ever practice. And so now she gets to practice in peace. Things kind of shift between the two of them one night when the heroine is practicing on her violin and the hero just sits on the stairs and listens to her play. Like she doesn't know that he's there, but he's just sitting there and listening and is in total awe of this woman. Like he's like, that's the first time I have been able to feel something since my accident. So I love, I love this book so much. It is so stinking good, so underrated. People need to read it. Then I have Truthfully Yours by Kanan Armstrong. These two characters end up becoming roommates at an apartment above a bookstore in Scotland. So the heroine is kind of down on her luck and she hasn't been experiencing the best out of life recently. And so she decides to 
go to Scotland for the summer and she's gonna help take care of this bookstore while the owner is out of town. Her first night there, um, or one of her first nights there, someone comes into the apartment. She is terrified. She's like, no one else is supposed to be here. She ends up hitting this person over the head with like a pan or a bat. I can't remember off the top of my head. It turns out to be a famous actor of a show she really loves. And she's like, uh, what is this guy doing? Like she calls up the owner. She's like, what is so-and-so doing on the floor of this apartment? She goes, oh yeah, that's my brother. Yeah, he's a famous actor, didn't you know? Um, so <laughs> they end up having to be roommates. There's actually also a little history between the two of them, not directly, but indirectly. So there's a little tension there. Um, there's great anxiety and autism representation in this book as well. And also like the celebrity factor is a nice little sprinkle of fun. <laughs> then I have The Roommate Risk by Talia Hibbert. I'm still trying to like get used to saying The Roommate Risk because this used to be a different title. I think it used to be called Wanna Bet like a whole different title and stuff but she changed it so I'm having to like get used to that um so the roommate risk um is about these two characters who when they were in college they actually hooked up for a night the heroine kind of like seduced him and he was a very innocent guy and um afterwards she's like just by the way I only do one night things like this isn't gonna go any further even though he kind of like fell in love with her the first time that he met her and he really wants this woman to stay in his life he's like i cannot picture her not in my life anymore so he just tells her okay we can be friends then can we like be friends we can hang out do stuff and so they're just friends after that point this is like years later when this book takes place after that point the heroine's like apartment like floods or something like a a pipe burst or something and she needs a place to stay so the hero offers his apartment for her to come stay in and with their forced proximity with them living together he can't really bottle up the feelings that he has towards his best friend <laughs> like at all <laughs> and then she starts to get to know the hero more like in a more intimate way because she's living with him now and things are kind of like opened up for her like oh my gosh i never thought about this and this and maybe i do want a serious relationship maybe i do want the hero so it's actually really cute. It's a, is like novella length. So if you want like a fun, short, quick read, I recommend this one. There's also an audiobook for it. Then I have Hidden Waters by Katherine Cowles. This is book number three in her Tattered and Torn series. You got to read about Addie in book number one specifically, um, where she escaped her family's cult. And her sister, not sister, cousin, sorry, cousin, <laughs> her cousin, who was the heroine of book one, has kind of like set her up in her boyfriend's house that he doesn't live in anymore because he moved in with his girlfriend and so he, there's this like empty house and so she's been living in it by herself been living like very independently is getting to know the world more after living in this cult and that hero from book number one who like owns the house his brother is coming back into town he's a doctor he's been overseas working and he needs a place to live while he is remodeling his house it's not done yet Addie's like okay i guess like this is this is your house like your brother should be allowed to live here also um like this is i don't i don't own this house and so she very reluctantly like internally agrees to this she's very enthusiastic like in person like oh of course yeah he can come live but in her head she's like freaking out because she doesn't have the best experience with men because she lived in a cult but beckett is the complete 100 percent opposite than every single other man like she knows he is so patient and kind and understanding of her past and her trauma and is willing to go at her speed in every single way possible like i love becky he's one of my favorite book boyfriends of all time because of how sweet and gentle and kind he is like i love me a sweet gentle kind hot man he is all those things <laughs> beckett does slowly start to bring down Addie's walls and try to show her like that he is there for her every step of the way he kind of like falls for this sweet shy woman slowly and gradually they fall for each other and it's it's really beautiful it's like probably my favorite Catherine cowell's book and the last one that i have is another surprise baby one this is lizzie blake's best mistake by Maisie eddings this is very similar to out on a limb in the fact that hero finds out the heroine's pregnant asks her to move in the hero is in america on a business trip he's originally from australia he lives in australia and he has this grand old night with lizzie k okay, it's super fun lizzie's a really fun girl but then when he gets back to australia he gets a call from her and it's like hey dude uh, I'm pregnant. It's your baby. Just letting you know. And he's like, oh my gosh, I'm on my way. She's like, oh, you're coming to visit? Like, it's fine. You don't have to. He's like, oh no, I'm moving to America. Like, like I have to. Like, you're carrying my child. Um, I want to be a part of my child's life. So he moves to America and he insists that they live together for the same reasons that Bo wanted to move in with Wynn and out on a limb. Like, he's like, you're pregnant. I want to be there with you to help you throughout the pregnancy. And like, I want to help you raise this baby i want to be like good, a good co-parent with you so um and yeah when they're roommates they fall in love with each other it's really sweet really funny i really related to lizzie in a lot of ways there's adhd representation 
it's a solid read. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some roommate romance recommendations. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a house emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.